I don't think anyone during those 35 years shot more photographs than I did. And, um, I came from Germany as a young kid, was like, glad to be accepted here in America. And being a photojournalist, it was just, even later on I told people, it's such a great job. You penetrate into so many environments. And when I did about nine assignments and now if you give a person two assignments, he's overloaded. After I came home, after my nine assignments of the day, the city editor said, oh God, can you run out, shoot another one? Sure, we did it, because we, we were journalists, by, we loved it, and we didn't look at the paycheck only, you know what I mean? So, as I said, I was born in Germany, born 35, 1935, and after the World, World War II, uh, having been, my grandfather was Jewish according to the Nazi laws, I was quarter Jewish, but in Germany I just did not see much of a future for a person with a Jewish name like Levin, they pronounced it Levin to make it sound as Jewish as I could, and whenever I heard that word it just was like a step in my in my bag. So I came to America and was one reason I was able to come to America during the time right after the war. I'm one of a colonel in the US Army who bivouacked near our house. He took me, knowing my history a little bit, took me under his wings, tried to give me my first English lessons. Not much has improved since. <laughs> but uh, so he wanted to adopt me at the time, but I was only 10. But later on, when I realized there always will be some hint of anti-Semitism in Europe, Germany, I thought I put my trust in coming to America when I was 25 years old. So I, I never planned on coming to, to Oregon. I came by ship, the USS United States, one of the great liners. I, came by across the ocean, two, two days only, it was the fastest ship out there. Well, when I came to, to Portland, I had about 50 bucks left in my pockets <laughs> because I did not expect the air fare from, from New York to uh, Portland. heard Statesman Journal has an opening as an engraver, photo engraver, and so I I just found that picture the other day, this was my job at the time, with an engraving machine we put pictures on one cylinder to be engraved into plastic, that's what I, my job was, and the plastic was being put on the press, that's how we produced pictures at the time. Okay. And that was my main job. I asked, I asked the, Clarence Zeitz was the city editor. I have a picture of him too. I asked him, is there ever a chance I can get a picture published? Well, he said, oh yeah, if it's any good. I said, well, I'll show you guys. Yeah. So, <laughs> so I, during my, whenever I had a spare moment, I was, uh, and when Daryl Church was a, was a hired photographer at the Capital Journal at this time, and he was, when he was a little overloaded, I say, asked me, are you willing to take a picture? I said, sure, I was just waiting for that moment. But you see, when we put a picture on a machine, it took about half an hour. My job was getting, we had a 12 o'clock deadline in the afternoon, 12 at noon. So coming to work in the morning, it was quite, you had to be on top of it to get all those pictures scanned. So I... More or less, I said, all right, I can. I loaded the machines. I knew it would take about half an hour for them to run. So I ran, I knew, that's why I'm so quick. I learned to shoot pictures and be back in the office in half an hour later. So okay. when I came to the scene of the thing, I told, yeah, 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 everything's fine. Just give me the message and bingo, bingo. I was back to change the machines again. So it's, it's my being hyperactive, it's a result of all that. I always... If people, if editors in the, if an editor was talking to a reporter about a project, 
and they seemed like it was impossible. I walked by the desk, listened in for a minute. I said, "If it's possible, if it's impossible, ask me to do it." But this was my attitude. You know, naturally, I I rubbed some people the wrong way by being arrogant. But it was an arrogance based on confidence. I knew I could hack it. And being able to communicate with people has been so much more more important than just pointing the camera. When people ask me, what camera do you use? Oh, they, um, that was unimportant for me. The camera was just to record my idea and what was going on. It was just like a typewriter for a reporter. That was a camera for me. I saw a finished picture before I lifted the camera, moving yourself to get the proper background. No, I would never say to a person, turn around so I get this background. I move to have that person move with me and stuff like that. It's just something you learn over the years.